Spoiler warning, this video does include some story and secrets. A link to the game has been posted in the description. Every sale helps. Enjoy! Hello everybody, Reese510 here. Today I am playing my own game. This game here, The Misadventure of Melon. Uh, I created it. I've done everything apart from the music. Uh, I hired two wonderful composers to do the music. So this game is an old school beat em up game. And you can see here that the hero Melon here has just dreamt of being this amazing hero who's stopped all the evil in the world. Not that there is any evil in the world yet. So he starts his adventure just getting out of bed, grabbing his bag. There's the title. Now we start in his village and you can see that it has loads of people here just casually, well, being villagers really. Uh, and you can see here that there's an arrow pointing to this apple, so Melon must be hungry. So attack this tree. Oh! There we go. Started the apocalypse. So this has just released a bunch of corruption into the world, and you're meant to get knocked out here. And we'll get introduced to our second main protagonist. There he is. Doug. So he's going to help us out here. He's scared away the, the evil cats and he's going to try try take us away from them. And this is where we start the game. Chapter 1 Lost in the Snow. And you've seen up here there was a little penguin. You'll see little hints like that um, to find different secrets. As you can see here there's a piece of melon in this ice. Uh, we can't collect that just now because we've got full health. But you'll notice that there's other things that we can hit, and you get things like coins. Oh, here we go. There's Doug getting all scared. And these these creatures are now corrupted, so we need to beat them up. So it's a standard beat em up game. Uh, there is little hidden things to do. That you can hit those small penguins and if you get all of them you can get an achievement called I Hate All Penguins. Also we just stole that penguin's hat. So that happened. And Doug has joined us. So now we've got a friend. Uh, I'm not going to show every secret. Um, mainly because some secrets you have to do backtracking for. Like you'll get a, a skill later on that you can then use uh, to unlock different things. But just now we've started a, a fresh playthrough, I'm not going to use any cheats. Um, I'm not going to use any of my my developer game master hacks or whatever. So that was the first screen that we've just cleared. So you can see the general type of gameplay. Um, just going through, beating some enemies up. But also, here we get our first throwable item. So it's a snowball. What you can do with that is it will instantly knock back any enemy. So it's mainly for things like crowd control. So if they're all swarming you, then what you can do is you can throw it and it will hit them all the way. Uh, it doesn't do too much damage, but as you've seen there, it can hit them multiple times and it can hit multiple enemies. And we'll come to our first mini boss here. So. I've got this snowball and I can easily cheat and I can just throw it at him without him getting near me. But what he's meant to do is chase after you like that and then hit him to the side of the screen. And now you can hit him with the snowball and it can do even more damage. Also you can just attack him like normal. But you'll see if I run away he'll just, he'll just sort of try follow me and he'll like back up and stuff to try trick you. But what you can do is you can run up and down. And that way he will see you and then try to go after you. And this snowball just appears to be a weapon, but really what it could actually do is activate a secret at the start of this um, this area. So you've seen at the start how there was just a pile of snow that looks like it's interactable, but you can't really do anything with it. Well if you have the snowball, you can actually throw it onto it and you get a little snowman. And then you get your first golden piece of melon. Now your golden piece of melon actually extends your health 
if you look up here at your health bar, you've got the um, the golden piece now, and that's your extra health. But if you attack the snowman, you can steal his hat. So now we've got top hat, we can actually go and select any hat that we want. So we can keep the golden melon piece as a hat if we wanted to. That isn't required to keep the extra health. But I like this top hat, so sort of the first, well, one of the first secret hats that you can get. Oh, and here we have our first secret room in the background. Uh, and you can see this sign. This sign is here to show you that there is a boss here and when you die, when you restart on um, When you die you don't get put back all the way to the start of the map. You only get put back to the screen that you're on. So you can see here I've just uncovered an igloo and there is me trapped in some ice. Now you, everyone tries to knock me out the ice, it's not possible. Uh, out the ice. But it's not possible. Um, I didn't make it possible. And there's a Castle Crasher, a Pac-Man, a Sonic, and Mario. So once we take this guy out, as I said, this signifies where the boss is. So we can go ahead, but you can see that there's really slippy ice and it's really hard to control your character on this. So the boss is fairly simple. He's the first boss. He's sort of standard. Um, is the standard punch and bag essentially but it has different moves where you can get like trapped in the ice and your hat sits on top of the ice uh, you can swap sides you can do a lot but I'm, I'm fairly used to taking him out and I know what all his moves do and it's a, it's a fairly standard fight for me so you can see even just now I'm only level 3 um, that's quite a low level and you can see I uh, took like maybe one hit if that and now we get a lot of cutscene because all the penguins smashed through and we get a bonus level so in this bonus level what you do is you collect coins and you dodge everything apart from the mushroom which slows down time but also spawns the same amount of coins oh got hit and died. Now we are at our first shop. So you can see here you always want to progress right but there is a sign there saying shop to your left. So we can go to our left and here we have a hat and some sort of upgrade. Your pet will pick up coins so we'll get that as well. But as I said I don't want to have that hat so I can go back into my hats and there we go. Select the one that I want. And he says, I don't speak English. But actually, when you go to him the next time, Pineapple Works Pizza. Hurry up and buy. I can't understand your weird accent. Do you ever get deja vu? I am error. I love this song. It plays every day. So he has like over 50 things that he can say and every shopkeeper is the same. So it will say something random every time that you walk up to him. And obviously you can get things multiple times like deja vu joke or, or different things like that. So once once you've completed this level, uh, you can see underneath here that we've got the golden melon piece. But we have not completed it on hard mode. If we had completed it on hard mode, we would have got two extra hats as a reward. But you would still have to buy them. Uh, we can obviously access our hats and things here uh, and once you complete a level you unlock the store for that level so there's store one here's our upgrades and we've only got this one which is the coin collector which means the pet will pick up coins so we can go on to chapter two chapter two darkened future we're in a spooky cave pretty good for uh, for being close to halloween and speaking of Halloween, if you play this game on Halloween, you'll notice that we have almost like a little easter egg uh, for around Halloween time. I'm not going to spoil anything, but here's your first like jump. You can jump over that. Uh, and here is 
a boulder with a skeleton with a whip and an explorer's hat. There we go. So that's a, a reference to Indiana Jones. And you can see that these skeletons have like um, boomerangs made from bones you can put two and two together and imagine what the name is. But um, yeah, later on you can actually get that as an upgrade and it is the most powerful like upgrade that you can get. And oh, you can see that there's fire here which you can actually get hurt by. So if I stand here, there you go. And oh, there's some skeletons having a bath. Hey. There's two bros sitting in a hot tub. Not even a foot apart. And you can probably notice things here and there um, that you could probably hit or find a secret from. A light all that sort of um, be up to, to you viewers if you want to play the game because I would rather not show every single little detail um, but yeah there is there is quite a few secrets and unlockables hidden throughout the game and here we are again at the mini boss so this mini boss is fairly easy you just sort of run away from these X's and you need to wait for him to get knocked out or puffed out. There we go. And then we just walk up to him and then start hitting him. And then we float again. Now I'm making this look pretty easy but a lot a lot of people have troubles with this area. Well this mini boss in specific. Um, I don't really have troubles with him. I can see why people can have troubles with him. Here's his second sort of phase where he drops them a lot faster. And there we go, I even got hit there. It's because I ran into a crystal. And we're just going to need to wait for him to... There we go. So you can notice that I'm using the light attack for that. I'm just using the fist. That's because you can hit him faster. It does slightly less damage, but because you're hitting them like more times then it adds up to even more health getting taken off rather than just using the the main attack which is the bag the bag hitting like that and you'll see there's a little treasure chest here and we get some melon and we also get some coins we can move into the next area and what we could do is here's another secret room behind here and you want to get to the secret rooms before you actually fight anything because what ends up happening is they respawn and fair enough you do get extra XP but you don't want to be fighting them a lot. You can see the dog actually picking up the coins for me there. You can see how they sort of magnetise towards them. And you can see there's a lot of art supplies and paint brushes and things like that in this area. Well that's because the skeleton is Bob Ross. We don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. That's a, a nice little quote from Bob Ross. And here we go. These are the enemies that we would have had to have fought. So different enemies um, are actually more susceptible to getting hurt by like uh, the light attacks versus the hard attacks or using the boomerang or some of them are even um, are even immune to things like that. But that's that's later on in the game. So you can see here we have the this little eyeball and it disappears when we get too close to it and actually watches us walk past. Uh, that's another secret. I'm not gonna show you it because I don't have the right skills and things just now. That's what I was talking about earlier on when I said that there was backtracking. So you can see that little skeleton running away. Uh, he had a piece of the statue that broke at the start because you need to collect each part of the statue um, to contain the evil. Well, the corruption. And we've got the second boss here who just like tried to slam onto us. So 
So when he gets down to a certain amount of health, he will spawn enemies. And I think he spawns enemies three or four times. Oh, he just took his head off. You can actually attack the head while the body runs around. Just don't get in the way of the body. Oh, he's throwing a rock at us. So once again, I am making the game look pretty easy, but that's because I've played this a million times over. Uh, if he can't get to his head in time, it will automatically just go back on, like that. Oh. And this game was made in uh, pretty old software. Uh, you can probably tell by the art what software. Uh, so that's why the game's pretty sort of blank in some areas. That's because I couldn't have a lot of things on screen, but I had this 2D drawn art style. Everything is hand drawn on a Wacom Cintiq 27Q HD monitor, which is the, the drawing tablet that I use. And there's another piece of the statue. And oh, the place is shaking, so we need to get out. And it is another bonus game. So these bonus games, all they're for is collecting coins before you get to the shop. Uh, you can die here and you'll still be fine. You won't lose anything. There's When you die in the game, you actually lose coins. So that's, that's sort of the consequence. But I'm just going to skip ahead to when I've finished this. And I died. There we go, we have escaped the cave. Everything is all good. Apart from when the smoke clears, Doug is gone. Nowhere to be seen. Apart from he's right beside you. So Melon's happy. And we are at the second shop. So just over here, you can see D to throw. And it's 150 coins, we're definitely getting that. So now whenever I press D, there we go, can throw the boomerang. And when you throw the boomerang, you can see that you can actually move it around by moving your character. That's because it follows the character, so you can almost control the boomerang, so you can get it to sit in sort of one place for quite a long time. And you can trap enemies within that radius. We'll buy this hat because why not? And there we go. So, that is the first playthrough uh, of the game. I will leave the next chapters to their own episodes because they are a lot longer and they have more content. There's a lot more happening in those levels, uh, whilst these first two levels were sort of an introduction to the game. So I'll see you in the next episode.